Hello, welcome to today's devotion. <clears throat> we are in the Gospel of Luke, and we're looking at chapter 6, verse 37. As we go into this devotion, please pray with me, and uh, we'll seek God together. We need His help always. Thank you, Father, for always being faithful and guiding us and leading us, and we pray that as we go into your Word, that you open up our hearts and minds to hear what your Spirit is telling us. We approach you um, with a sense of awe that the universe, the creator of the universe, would hear us and usher us into your throne room. But that's indeed what you, what you do. It's what you've made available to us through the work of your son, Jesus Christ, and his death and resurrection. And so we, with confidence, humility, and a sense of awe, come into your presence once again as we go into your word. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus continues his teaching. Last two devotions, we <clears throat> talked about love at uh, pretty extensively. Starting with verse 37, Jesus says these words, Do not judge and you will not be judged. Let's just stop right there. <laughs> because judgment is something that is, and this is going to relate to what we just talked about, um, the, two, the two previous devotions. You'll hear people say, don't you judge me. You have no right to judge. You And, and, and judgment is something that, um, that, like love, is frequently misunderstood. Judgment is rendering a behavior or attitude or both, and the consequences that it produces. That's it. So a judge, if you will, will see and there'll be a case that will come before them and they will hear it and they will render a decision that is the consequence for a behavior. That's judgment. And the condemnation then is the, 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 the punishment, if you, if you will, or the forced upon result, forced upon result of that behavior. That, however, is not the same as discernment. Discernment is the ability to know, ultimately, the difference between right and wrong. And discernment alone belongs to God. God is the one that tells us what is right and what is wrong. You, in our culture, we may think, no, we are capable on our own, separate from God, of deciding what is right and wrong. However, if you go back to the two previous devotions that we uh, talked about and all the aspects of love, no committee would ever come up with that as a, not just a goal, but a, a state of living. Because committees would say, no, if someone... Uh, we're not going to do good to those who hate us. We're not going to do that. And yet God's um, instruction, his revelation, will give us the ability, not entirely, but will point us in the right direction with regards to discernment. So the Ten Commandments, for example, are Ten Commandments stipulations is, a, is another way because it's a covenant that reveal what is good, what is healthy, what brings life into one's life. And the Ten Commandments give us discernment. It is not good to lie. Now, one's, <laughs> one's conscience can, can run, ring, run circles regarding our supposed need to lie in various circumstances, our propensity to lie, 
our inclination to lie, and our, well, self-justification in lying. But ultimately, it's God's revelation that says, don't lie. That's discernment. Or don't murder. That's discernment. And so God will always give us discernment. And that is not the same as judgment. Judgment is proclaiming something as either good or bad with regards to its behavior and its attitude and the consequences thereof. Force consequences because a murderer doesn't. There's not ever someone that murders another person that turns themselves in and says, you know what? I murdered this person. Um, you don't even have to look for me. I'm going to come in and, and I, I'm ready for, to, to lock myself in prison for 40 years. You don't even have to pass judgment on it. You don't have to pass judgment on me. I know I deserve 40 years. I'm going to spend the next 40 years in prison. You don't even need to have a prison guard because I'm going to do it on my own. I accept my consequences. That is not human nature. That's why judgment is always forced as a consequence on someone's behavior because they, they, they would not choose to do it. On a much lesser note, for example, if you have a, you're raising a kid and they're, say, in their teenage years and you, they want to go out and you say, that's fine. Be back by, I don't know, 10 o'clock. Let's say 12 o'clock. Be back by 12 o'clock. And they say, I promise to do it. And they come back at 2 in the morning and you realize they come back at 2 in the morning. You ask them about it. They lie to you. You find out that they've been lying. And then you say, all right, you are now grounded for a month. You're not allowed to leave the house and go out and play, hang out with your friends for one month. That is a imposed consequence that that teenager would never, ever voluntarily take that on themselves. And that's the difference between discernment and judgment. So when God says, do not judge, and you will not be judged, what he's talking about is not a civil kind of a scenario. He's talking about, because civil laws is civil law, he's talking about living a life with one another and going through life with a, a judgmental attitude that that is bad, and that is bad, and that when, <laughs> when that's your opinion. Even if it's bad, the, 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 the behavior may be bad, but the consequences of that may be clear, but that mean, but, there, but, but also you don't condemn that person based from your own judgmental seat, but on a higher good. It's very complicated because judgment is, is, is something that we're prone to do from our sinful nature by way of accusation. The enemy is always accusing. That's what the word Satan means, to accuse. And because we have rebellion in us, we're constantly accusing. Oh, they're not all that good. Oh, they think they're all that great. That's a judgment that I'm talking about. They think that they're better than everybody well, they may think that they're better, but that's not yours to judge. And to be able to not do that can only take place when we're focused on God. Because that's God's domain. And we are God's people and he will work through what needs to be worked through in our lives to forge us into the kind of people that he wants us to become. That's not our job. Well, <clears throat> that is uh, the first half of verse 37. The second half is forgiven, you will be forgiven. And that is just as important because judgment and forgiveness, forgiveness are two sides of the same coin. We'll get to that next time. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us as we go into the word. And may you continue to grow in the truth and discernment of his spirit and trust in his goodness. I'll see you next time.